This is a nice close-up view of the Rossler attractor. It's a strange attractor. This was actually printed on a 3D printer. And I've never had good luck trying to visualize these, visualize these things on a computer. So I, you know, made my own. So let's take a look at how this achieves one of the things about a strange attractor. So strange attractors, they attract, first of all. They have a never repeating path inside them. So they have essentially an endless loop and they have zero volume. All right. So the way this one achieves it is it actually started out, and you can see in the middle, there's this little nub. And I started out a trajectory over here. I got to the nub and then I cut off the piece that went to the nub and then I let it run and it gets closer and closer to the strange attractor. So the strange attractor is really this ring on the outside. And the way that it makes this infinitely long path is when it's on the outer ring, you can see it goes to here, goes up and then it goes down and then it gets to the interior of the disc that it's in, the annulus. And it's doing that for a lot of these. So a lot of the stuff on the outer path, they end up getting mixed back in, but they get mixed back in near the center of the disc. And so then if we follow that path, let's start with the innermost one. It's gonna come back around and it won't actually get mixed again. It'll just follow through. But each time it goes around, it's getting further and further out. Eventually it's going to hit one of these and it's going to get mixed back inside. And so that's how this Rossler attractor, that's how it works. And supposedly, sorry for the shaking, this is a, quite a small model. Supposedly the person that came up with this actually envisioned it from a taffy mixing machine where it kind of takes the same linear strip of taffy and it mixes it into itself over and over and over again. And there you have it, a very small model of the Rossler attractor. I'll try to make this quick. So you just saw a video of the close-up of the Rossler attractor, and this is actually it right here. Um, it's a little fragile and you can't bring it very close to the camera. The autofocus will kind of ruin it. But it essentially fits in the palm of my hand. And, you know, how is this thing made? How is it generated? Stuff like that. So to answer that, first a little bit of background. So Rossler attractor, it's just three couple differential equations and two of them are linear. It's weird. So you have dx dt equals negative y minus c, linear. dy dt equals x plus a times y, where a is a parameter in the case of that little model. And then also the one that Rossler actually studied, a was 0 0.2, b was 0 0.2, and the c was 5.7. So dx dt dy dt, those are linear. The nonlinear one is dz dt. So that's b plus z times x minus c. So write the z times the x, that's going to be the nonlinear bit. And so in this thing, I tried to draw it. I'm not a great artist, but kind of have, there's a fixed point in the middle here. There'll be a fixed point somewhere out here. This one's unstable, that one's unstable. So you end up going to the strange attractor, it's attracting kind of stuff in the middle, it kind of circles around, it can spiral out, and it can mix back in without going on this thing. And it can also kind of go under it and through it to mix around. This piece, it has a twist in it. I'm not a great artist, but you know, like twists, like you take a belt and you twist it halfway. So essentially after you twist it, the top over here is now the bottom over here. And so when trajectories get onto this bit, the interior ones, actually kind of end up closer to the outside and the outside ones here end up shuffled back into the inside. So it's kind of shuffling back into itself over and over again. So that's a verbal description. And then the other thing is, you know, these parameter values, these aren't the only ones that actually cause strange attractors. There's, there's a bunch. It's just, this is one of the parameter sets that have been well studied. And the, another one, so, if you just look at a equals b equals 0 0.2 and c equals 1, you just get a limit cycle, so attracting, in approximately in the xy plane when you start. The way that these are formed is actually has to do with how that limit cycle changes as you vary the parameter c from 1 to 5.7. So this strange attractor, it's almost like a limit cycle that's infinitely long and ends up filling a two-dimensional shape. All right. The way that happens, which you'll see in the next video with some computer drawings, 
is essentially, you know, c equals 1, you start out with this loop on the bottom, and as c gets bigger and bigger, the loop will deform as c increases, but there's going to be a critical value of c where the loop actually becomes twice as long all of a sudden. It kind of separates from itself, but not into two pieces. It separates kind of along its length and becomes twice as long. And then you end up with this loop, and that loop will deform over time as well, but eventually it'll actually separate again. So, it be, you know, it started out as a loop, it's deforming, changing its length a little as C changes, but then there's a sudden change at critical values of C, where it kind of separates from itself and becomes twice as long, and it keeps doing that over and over again. So the separation is called a period doubling bifurcation, and you essentially have an infinite number of period doubling bifurcations in a finite change of the parameter C. So you double the length an, you know, an infinite number of times over a finite change in C, and you essentially end up with kind of an infinitely long limit cycle that's attracting, and it ends up filling a two-dimensional surface. So if you want to see something a little better than pipe cleaners in my hands, you know, just stay tuned for a few more seconds, you'll see some computer graphics and how that limit cycle changes as I change C. This is for the Rossler system of equations. So we have parameters A and B in that system in this study is going to be 0 0.2, they're both 0 0.2, and we're going to vary the value, the parameter C, from 1 all the way to 5.7, which is, you know, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 5.7. That's a classic case to study the strange attractor, the Rossler attractor. So we start out, and there there will there'll be pockets of a strange attractor, there'll also be pockets of limit cycles, and there'll be some other interesting behavior. And we'll see actually how the strange attractor is formed. So here we have a limit cycle, it's just all by itself and it should be going around, let's see, this way, I believe. So anti-clockwise. And it doesn't, it's not, it's not very interesting, so it is attracting, it's stable, so there should be a fixed point somewhere around there. And then we're going to actually take the parameter C now and we're going to increase it, and I think something interesting happens just a little bit before 3, if I remember correctly. So assuming the computer does not have a seizure, this is not easy for it. A little jumpy, but the computer has persevered so far. There we go. So went a little bit too far. So you have this limit cycle, it's getting a little bit bigger, the back hump is getting a little bit higher. But as C has increased, there's this critical value where it actually it doesn't split into two species pieces, but it does split into one piece that's twice as long. And there you go. So it's actually one limit cycle still, but it's twice as long now. And the way this works out, it's going around. This piece right here is going behind. And it comes back around, and this one goes in front. So this is kind of the uh, top of the Rossler attractor that's forming. It's going to form and unform multiple times, but we're going to keep going. So this is called a period doubling bifurcation. So the limit cycle became twice as long and kind of separated from itself. And now I think somewhere around a little bit before 4, we're going to see that again. So the limit cycle does keep changing as you change the parameter C. And see here. Coming up to the next period, doubling bifurcation. There we go. So it's just separating. And now it does it again. So now it used to be this little tiny loop. As C has changed, the loops have gotten a little bit bigger diameter but it's also doubling itself every once in a while. And it's going to be at a specific parameter value. All of a sudden, it's just twice as long. And so that, I think we have to go a little bit above 4. We'll actually get another period doubling bifurcation. There we go. So now we have, it goes around 8 times, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. But still one loop. And this is actually how the strange attractor gets formed. So the period doubling bifurcations, I think there's even, yeah, there's another one right now. So then you had 8 before, so now it's going around 16. These period doubling bifurcations keep happening, happening faster and faster and faster. And they actually happen so quickly that an infinite number of them happen. An infinite number, number of period doubling bifurcations happen with a finite change in the parameter C. And so how you kind of end up forming the strange attractor is you have a limit cycle that splits itself 
to in kind of half into twice its length an infinite number of times. And it ends up becoming a space filling curve and forms the strange attractor. But notice we aren't at the you know 5.7 yet, so there are other cases of chaos in between. And here we go. So it's starting to split a lot now. And all of a sudden it just kind of simplified. So very small changes in parameters can actually have very big changes in how the this forms. So potentially this could be a lot of limit cycles. I don't think so. But one thing that is interesting is, you know, the limit cycles were splitting every time. They were doubling in length. But then if you look at this one and you count, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So you can't get to 12 by a power of 2. So this has a factor of 3 in it. And so that's actually indicative that there was some chaos going on there because the strange attractors can actually just disappear all of a sudden and they end up turning into limit cycles that have that are um, have prime factors sorry odd factors so you know you could have three or eleven or seven things like that now if we keep going it's just going to keep doing this over and over again so very small change in parameter you get a huge change in the system and it's going to do this quite a lot but you can see every once in a while it actually is kind of reforming into just these all of a sudden it all collapses but then we should have an odd number of passes here so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen so that's seven and two and we're just going to see that over and over again and you can see actually my computer had some problems with this so the end of the loop there is showing it's, it didn't finish. It had to try and go around too many times and the computer just, just couldn't handle it. So it's going to keep doing that over and over again and we're still going to get, so here's a nice one. So what's this? One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's two times three. And it just did a period doubling bifurcation. And then it did a lot. And there we go. So small changes in parameters can have a pretty big effect. So now, let's just see, it's going to be fairly, it's going to be a lot of this for quite a while, but we will have some simplifications. And let's see here, I think there's an 11 coming up. Oh, what's this one? One, two, three, four, five. All right, and it does last a little while, at least, you know, from this little change in the arrow, but again, it's doubling, looks like it's doubling, it's going pretty quick. It was quick to split itself apart. Right. Mm, that one could have been. So how many here? One, two, three, mm, probably four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So uh, hopefully, uh, my assumption is correct that these came from eleven pieces and there was a purely doubling bifurcation in between. But yeah, it looks like we found an eleven. Then keep going. And we're actually going to hit something interesting sometime after 5 here. So it should get actually pretty... Let's see if I can find it. Okay, there we go. So there's the 3. So all of a sudden... So this one does look like it has an awful lot of loops because it's went around, I think this is like 200 or 300 times or something. And so it went around a, that, you know, hundreds of times and it still didn't complete itself because you can obviously see the end of the loop right here. And then all of a sudden it collapses down into just three. One, two, three. You know, one, two, three. And then, so we went from one to five. Looks like we had some very interesting behavior. We saw period doubling bifurcations. We saw how that's going to form the strange tractor and there's more than one. But then all of a sudden, the stranger characters can just disappear. Kind of they annihilate themselves, but they somehow annihilate themselves to get a number of loops with a factor of three in them. And this actually lasts for quite a while. So, right, we're getting up to 5.7 is the kind of classical one that I think Rossler studied. 
and we finally had a period doubling bifurcation and then we should have another coming up sorry that's six loops now around and looks like we had quite a few and now we're going to get let's see yep and there's quite a lot of them all right and we're done so this is the typical the classical point that people studied at parameter a is 0 0.2 parameter b is 0 0.2 and parameter c is 5.7 yeah that's how the strange attract is formed it starts with one loop and the loop kind of splits itself along its length into a loop that's twice as long and it does that an infinite number of times in a finite change in the parameter and then it can also just collapse all kind of sort it's hard to wrap my head around but sort of the all the different loops themselves that are next to each other can kind of collide and annihilate but somehow end up with some left over and they'll have a factor an odd factor in there